All right, so are we live? I see we have 10 people in here right now. It's like 801. Are people in here? Let's make sure everything's working before we get started here. I, I tested it before this anyway, but I always like to start my streams off like this just to make sure that everything is good because sometimes things happen. So just wait a second for people to hop in here. Um, I see chats coming through. They're not linking, so let me fix this really quick. My plugin does not like to always link. There we go. There we go. We're getting chat now again. I don't know why it doesn't like to always link, right? All right. So I'm looking at the chat here on here. We have Zach in here. I wish this was Twitch so I could use my funny emotes. Camera's a tad laggy. Um, it shouldn't be. That's probably you. But uh, yeah, I have my chat now. So we are good. I'm going to switch and just get right into it. Did my thing disconnect? Wait, hold on. Hang on. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. So, yesterday what we did is we got the matrix done on this, right? So that's all done. And I set this up too. I can actually get even closer. I set up like a digital zoom on my camera so we can get like super close on this, which I think is really useful. But what we're going to be doing today is wiring this up to the controller. We have here just a regular little, actually, let's zoom in and really get in close. Have a little pro micro right here. We're going to be connecting this up, and then we will be doing the firmware a little bit later. Later. Uh, not layer. Later. So I'm just going to start wiring this. I do need to pull up on my computer here the wiring diagram for it. So if I switch here, what we'll do is we'll go to Scotto Keebs. And on here, I, I mentioned this yesterday, but all my boards have... They have information on how to wire them so like you can come here and see the diagram so we're going to actually be wiring this up according to this so we'll be wiring everything on here according to that but we have to add two more columns on the left and the right to accommodate for the extra columns that we have uh hey how's it going dude so yeah let's just start wiring it up according to this and we will just go from there all right so i'm having an issue with my 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 stream deck um i rebound a button so that it will press double click or one click so i'm just gonna have to click there for now but we could fix that later i'm just gonna start wiring this so let's actually start by pre-tinning our controller let me zoom you in a little bit more here and then we can actually probably get really close there there we go all right why won't that plug in what the hell? Do I have solder? Is that solder on my barrel connector there? Do I have a ball of solder? No. Oh, that's weird. Okay. That, that, okay. We're good. Alright. So let's start pinning or tinning these up. We need A0, A1. I think we just go 2, 3, and 4. No, I don't even use 2 and 3, do I? I use 4. I'm just looking on my diagram there. I go from 4... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we go down to here. So let's go down to there. Let me also lower the temperature on this to like, to like 300. Let me hit on my filter so I don't suffocate. There we go. All right. How is this view, too? Is this view any good? I feel like it looks good. Um, it is a digital zoom, so it's not like the best thing in the world, but on stream it shouldn't matter. So we'll use 2 and 3 for the additional pins, but we'll worry about those later. We'll just get down to 9 for now. So we'll do these. So we get those, then we gotta do over here we have A0, 1, 2, and 3. So that is, which one is that? A0, 1, 2, and 3. So we start here, then I think we just go all the way down. Yep, so we go all the way down then. Looks pretty clear, that's what I was hoping for. Um, I tried to, so... If you know anything about cameras, I can shoot this in 4K and I can capture in 4K, but it was laggy, so I do it. It's 1080p punched in, which, I mean, it's not a big deal with, like, the YouTube bitrate because it's so low, but... 
just the OCD in me. I'd rather if it was 1080 punched in, because then it would actually be a 1 to 1 correct ratio, but it's whatever. It's not a big deal. So we'll take those. Kind of see there. Um, but what I did want to do is I wanted to post this on my Instagram just to make sure that people are knowing that I'm live because the thing posted incorrectly earlier. It like posted as um like completely wrong. It posted it an hour later than it actually was for whatever reason. So I will just screenshot this. If it makes you feel better, my viewer says it's 1440. So yeah, I do stream in 1440. Um, it's a YouTube hack to basically upscale. Uh, I'll just post this. There we go. Okay. So it's it's a hack to make it better resolution afterwards, after the stream. I'm technically only in 1080p, but it's just upscaling, so. Alright. So we got those. Let's grab our board here. Let me punch out to a normal view. Let me also just punch you out a little bit more here. Got like 40 layers of zoom here. All right, let's start with some black wire here. We'll start up with the, uh, I want to start with the rose. I think we can do the rose first. Let's do that. So we'll have to align this. Want everything to run here, so we'll do it on this side. Try to align this. All right. So what I like to do with these, I like to wrap them kind of around the diode here. So what I'll do is I'll take this, go through, kind of twist it on, kind of see how that is. And then I also want to route it to the proper spot, which is on the controller. So we might actually, let's go like this and so we'll kind of wrap them underneath. We'll just kind of make them look really pretty. I have a ton of heat. Eventually that will connect. There we go. Just a little better now. And what we'll do is we'll kind of braid this underneath because I want it to align so it kind of comes out because we're connected to these pins here. So I want to like run it under. And you don't have to do this, but it just makes it look a little cleaner. It makes it easier to wire up to. the worst part about when you're trying to braid these under is that they don't always go where you want them to. So a lot of time you're kind of fighting it. Um, do I want to go under that or no? That will go there. We'll go there, kind of measure this. This one's supposed to go to 15. So we're going right about there. Put that off. When I solder the controller, I do not pre-tin the points. I put the wire into the hole and then solder them into the hole. Um, I used to do that, but I find that by pre-tinning everything, it just makes it easier, and then you don't have to worry about underneath. So if I pop this out, get out. So these are relatively flat. If you kind of put the wire in through there, it won't be as flat. So that's why I do it this way, is I can just tack it onto the end. Tin this up. Kind of just bring it in. right where you want it. So that's perfect. It's a very short wire, so we're going to have to kind of keep this all together, but do the next one. And I will have to update the firmware for this, too, um, on both QMK and everything, because it's a 4x12 layout now instead of the regular, uh, what is it, 4x10, so I do have to update that. I don't do, like, multiple layouts for them, but I do make it so... It works that way. Um, if you want to do it however you want. Uh, let's take that. Like that. Just 
see if I can kind of route this up towards the top. Go, trim that off. So they're good. Yeah, that looks good. Thanks, you have designed my first keyboard. You're welcome. Greetings from Argentina. What time is it in Argentina? Is it the same as here? I think it's on the same, right? As Eastern time? Or is it like an hour behind? Or ahead, maybe? to 12 so that's uh two hours ahead right be 10 o'clock wait yeah 10 o'clock didn't want to connect because it has spring to it let me see if i can get you guys a better view here too that's kind of like more punched in that might be a little better just can't move it too much but in this one actually it went my life a little easier probably With. Actually, I want to do it the other way, because I don't like how that one's coming out that way. I'm trying to route them that way, so... wobble goes crazy. Is it wobbly whenever I like move? Or are we good right now? Because <laughs> it's like super zoomed in. I replaced the USB from the Arduino for a GX16 plug. Is indestructible. Yeah, I've done that on a few boards. The only problem is that once it's GX16, it's no longer USB. So that can be annoying if you ever need to replace the cable. But otherwise, it's pretty cool. Right, so we have one more row after this. Also... So we'll go right there. I hate how this camera always wants to focus on my hand. Let me uh, punch this out a little bit. No, not that view. My thing is, my controller is annoying right now because I switched it to have a tap dance function so it has a double tap and it doesn't like to always fire the double tap. So I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, it is just in vial, but I don't feel like dealing with it right now. So I'm not gonna fix it right this second. But it does have two functions on one key. I think my tapping terms just messed up. Okay. All 
find one more. Let me grab some more wire. So this should be all the rows after this. How am I going to route this one? Like that, maybe? Something like that? Just get this under there first. How should I route this one? Probably like this. Like go under. Yeah, go like that and then up through. There are all the rows done. That should be good. Let me just inspect these to make sure they're nice. So you see they're all wired on there, but... Yeah, those look good. So those are fine. Now we can start with the columns. This is where we have to kind of pay attention to what we have here. So we have to just wire these up as this is. Let me make sure that those are right. So this one connects here. Uh, well, you can probably see this one. So this one should go right here. Right? No, this one here. Okay, so this is an extra one here, but I'll have to do that in the matrix. That's fine. But otherwise, these are all correct. Right? One, two, two, blank. Yes. So that looks about right. Yes. All right. So if we keep going with those, I'm going to be doing the columns in red. Just take some red. We are going to be skipping these outer ones to start with, because we'll be figuring that out later in firmware. But I'm just going to wire this according to my diagram first, and then figure the rest out afterwards. So we go to this one. It's going to be a little hard to get that under there, actually. Well, no, we want to start with this one, don't we? Now, is this on this side, right? Goes right. This should come up like that. Yeah. This Christmas music? Like 50s, what is this? Literally Christmas Wish. We're gonna listen to it. Listen to some Christmas music. Thanks, Spotify. I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling that. <laughs> I'm not feeling very Christmassy in almost February. Oh, perfect. 
Yo, do you watch any anime? The only anime type thing I watch is Arcane, but yesterday people said that isn't anime, um, because Japanese anime verse cartoon is different. That's about it. In theory, I could actually get firmware on this right now and test it, but I don't know if I want to do that yet. Um, actually, you know what? I will. I am going to do I'm going to do that. I'm going to put firmware after I get this just so I can make sure it's working, but sometimes I like to do that before I get... So this this happened to me on the Scotto Wing, actually, is that I soldered the entire Scotto Wing up, so all, like, what was it, 15 connections or so, and then I found out that I had a busted controller, and I had to reconnect an entire new one, and that was a massive pain in the ass. So I would recommend, actually, after you get your first, like, column and row connected that could function, like, the minimal possible to function, um, probably test it. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna actually test this. You're using 6337 solders and the knife-shaped solder head, or whatever it's called. Uh, yes. So I am using... Nope, nope. Come on. Work, controller. It's... The tapping term is just messed up on it. It just doesn't want to switch. I'm going to look at that here in a second because I want that to be fixed. But So I'm using this tip here, which is a KU tip. It's a little bit wider. Um, the other one that I use typically was this, which is a D24. So you can kind of see, I mean, not burn myself, but I almost burnt myself. We're good. So KU on the right, if it wants to focus, and then D24. This is a nice one. And then I'm using Kester 6337 solder, which is great stuff. It is leaded. So I'm going to get some firmware on this really quick, just so I can test. That is holding in there, so that's good. But I do need to leave this open so I can actually reset it. So I just pull this out a little bit. All right. So I can actually show you the overhead so you can still see that. We're going to go to QMK. And we're just going to flash this with the default key map, which should work for the uh, Scotto Elp. So I want to go to QMK flash, uh, hand wired. Slash Scotto Keebs, slash Scotto Elp, slash KM default. So that will compile this. Did that not do what I want? KMK, KMK flash, hand wired, Scotto Keebs, Scotto Elp. Oh, I need dash KB. There we go. So that will compile. This will take a second to do that. Then we should be able to flash this to get an idea if we're actually don't have a dead controller or not, because that would suck. Um, but we'll see. Um, what's what's chat doing right now? What are, What's everyone doing right now tonight? while I wait for this to compile, because Windows takes 10 years to compile on QMK. It's, it's torture, so. Come on, compile already. I don't know why QMK takes so long on Windows. Like, on Mac, it's almost instantaneous. Like, which one do you think is easier for a beginner, KMK or QMK? Um, QMK is more documented. KMK is Python, which could be better. Um, definitely could be better, KMK, if you know Python. But I would say probably QMK is just better documented. I'm playing Zelda Randomizer. What's Zelda Randomizer? I'm researching snowboard bindings. Oh, like the boot things? All right, we got this compiling now. I actually did want to keep my spot more organized with all these little, like, tables and stuff everywhere, but let's see if I can kind of keep it cleaner. Try to work on that. Keep it more organized while I build. All right, so we have a bootloader ready now. I need a tweezer to reset this as I plug it in. So I actually don't need to do that. I can just plug... I forget, this is an Arduino, so I can just plug it in. So I can plug this in here. If that wants to plug in. So plug that in, then we can just simply reset it by shorting reset and ground. It's right there. There we go. So that's erasing and then flashing it. All right, so now in theory, if I press the Q key, I should get a key. All right, good. So we are working. So we have the first ones set up. So we can continue now with the build. I know the controller's not dead. We're good to go now. So let's switch back here. I don't know. Actually, while we're in here, I'm going to look at Vial and see why the hell this isn't switching what I want, because this is annoying. So I can show you this. I have this TD0, right? So I have this TD0 on my key. 
So for one tap dance, it should fire this. Actually, it might be this. It might be this, actually. Now that I think about it. So it should fire one. We'll switch me here. Um, let's go to key map. So what, one will switch me there, and then a double tap will do that. That seems to be working a little bit better. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's working better now. I, that was, yeah. So I have a tap dance function, so I can double tap or single tap, which is useful. Have you built wireless keyboards? I've done it with ZMK and NRF, but without the batteries. Battery switches are painful for me to solder for some reason. Um, I have done wireless boards. I don't do any switches on them. I don't do power switches when I do wireless. I just do a, like, I use a deep sleep function within ZMK firmware. Um, if you go to my channel, you'll see wireless builds. If you just type in wireless, pretty much all the videos are titled with wireless when they're wireless. But uh, it's the same theory as, like, a, a pro micro if you're hand wiring it. It's just that you're using a different board. But I do leave off the these switches because I don't really find a use for them unless like you're traveling or something but what you can do is just make a locking layer that will lock the board when you're moving and it won't fire any key presses so that's what I typically do instead but we will continue on with this now Let's see if we get this under here let me grab a good tweezer so I can actually position this where I want so it might work I'm going to grab some blue tack too to kind of hold that down a little bit. Ah. Got this ball of blue tack. It's sit here and just fidget with it all night too. It's kind of fun, but take some of this and hold the controller down. It doesn't keep moving. What kind of batteries do you use with your wireless keyboards? Um, So what I use, I use a very specific one actually. Um, And I get these from, where's my browser? Give me a browser window. Uh, is that it? So I use these from TypeRacked. I'm sure you can find them anywhere else too, but they have these really big 750 mAh batteries, which I'm pretty sure you get these cheaper on AliExpress, but they're 750 mAh, so they'll last basically forever. Like these batteries, you don't have to ever charge. I think it's like, if we go to the ZMK power profile, for the power profiler, you can see that we have, so we do like a nice nano V2, we put a 750 in here. So like a non-split keyboard, you're looking at like 10 months charge. So it basically just doesn't go dead. Um, if it never goes to sleep, you're looking at eight months. Um, do you have any good guide recommendations for DIY split key over TRS? I can't find any good places. Um, I eventually want to do that. I want to eventually do a TRS split, but now my thing's not working. Why is it? I don't know. That's weird. It doesn't want to press. But uh, I, w I eventually want to do a TRS split, but I haven't done it yet. Eventually I will, though. Yo, and it comes with a JST. Yeah, it comes with a JST connector, which is nice if you ever want to replace the battery. You can just pop a new one in, considering if you don't use, like, super glue to hold it to the board, but... See, this is tricky now to get this underneath. Come on. Come on. It's like threading a needle. Super hard to do. Uh, dang, so it lasts even longer on a split? No, it doesn't last longer on a split if we switch back again. Um, if we change this to split, you'll see that you have the central and peripheral. The peripheral is the one without a controller. I think this is the, the right side. The left side is the central, so like the transmitting one. Um, it drastically cuts the one side, so it's a little bit different. But, all right. So let's put this under here. Try to. Let's see if we can kind of wiggle that up. I can't get that where I want it to be. That's annoying me. Let's just try to put it... We'll just put it in the middle of the row. So this here, too, is another cool thing about the silicone wire that I mentioned. Is that even though I'm about to solder, like, right on top of it... I don't worry too much about burning anything because it has like a super high melting point. So it's not going to like roast by doing that. So I can do this. It doesn't want to do it. Why does it not want to switch? Okay, I'm not even going to mess with it. I, I got to look at that. Something's weird with the firmware, but... But here, we can do this. And it won't melt the rest of the wire.
perfect. I'm gonna route this right through here. I actually don't want that routed underneath because that's gonna interfere with the ledge. So I'm gonna take this off and pull this back. Go back like this. Go. This angle that I'm at is so hard to do this because I'm trying to keep it all in camera, right? But like, I gotta flip this this way. You can probably still see, but like, I, I can't move it the way I need it to, and it's just driving me insane. This is a little bit better. Yeah, I think this is better. I have this big glob of stuff in the middle there too, but this will work better. Yeah, that's way better. I can actually get in and do stuff now. Alright, so we have all these running that way. Go underneath. So you can see I have that like tail there from the wire. Now I leave that so I can have enough room to like wrap it, but then you just cut it off. This makes life easier. You give yourself a little bit more to work with. I gotta pull it where you want it. You get like that little cross shape and it's it's perfect. You have a nice secure connection. Just notice ZMK's battery calculator. OLED display drains so much. Yeah, OLEDs are not efficient. That's why the nice views exist if you can find them in stock and if you're willing to pay the like 20 bucks for them. But uh, yeah, that's why they exist. They last a lot longer. If you switch it to nice views, you'll see that they don't drain as much as a actual OLED display. OLEDs kill your battery. And I think that displays are stupid a lot of the time too. Like there isn't really that many great uses for them. There's only so many good uses. Alright, there's that one. We have some orange soda. That's what I'm drinking tonight. This is like a thing. This is becoming a thing every time I do a stream. Is What am I drinking that night? Tonight it is zero sugar sun-kissed orange. That is tonight's drink of choice. All right, let's grab another wire. I always find the wiring part kind of the most relaxing out of a build. It, it's like the slowest, I guess, overall. I mean, maybe not the slowest. It's just kind of pretty slow. Just kind of relaxing. Zero sugar. Yes, zero sugar has zero. It says it, says it right on the bottle right there. How's that sus? It literally says zero. It says zero sugar. this sometimes getting the wiring though to like flow into the rest of the copper is a little bit hard but that one worked right there you do want to make sure that you keep track of where those little pieces go because they can short stuff out. I typically like blow them out with air too afterwards just to be safe. Now I can probably start routing these underneath. I'm 
never thought of using putty to secure the microcontroller yeah it's it's good as a temporary thing it just keeps it from like flopping around and keeps it in place so you can wire everything up right i used to use like tape and stuff too but the putty works great unless you melt it and it turns into like gum then it's pretty bad so you want to make sure you don't melt the stuff got that there Wouldn't putty melt? Yeah, it will melt if you get, like, an iron on it. It turns literally into, like, like gum. Like, melted gum. It's pretty gross, so you want to make sure you don't melt it. But it's far enough from everything where I'm not too concerned about that. As long as I don't get my iron on, I'm not going to melt it, but... Yeah, tin up. There we go. So, like, right here, if I was to put iron on that, it would probably melt it. But... I mean, you had to apply a decent amount of heat too, but still do that. Is that wire on there? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, this wiring, this is actually some of my like cleanest wiring. I'm really sorry if you already answered this, but what did you harvest the Alps from? So I can actually show that. Have I been just sitting on my screen this whole time? No, I don't think so. But uh Apple M10. Nope. This keyboard likes to disconnect. This is my core and it's on Bluetooth and it just it's so annoying. It's sort of like a phone in the way. Phones will interfere with Bluetooth. I think it's the M1006 keyboard. Um Apple Standard. Uh, this one. I harvested them from this. So I ripped them out of this board. Um, it was like 1986 is when the board was produced. How do you decide how many standoffs you want in your designs? Um, the process for designing the boards with the standoffs is I pretty much look, I think where it will push down, and then I just put standoffs there. I lean on the, I lean on the side of doing too many standoffs rather than not enough, because you can always remove them later, um, or just not use them if you don't want to, but... You want to kind of think in a way that where is there going to be pressure applied and then like where it should be balanced. So typically like around home row. So you can see these are kind of home row being supported by like a triangle there. So it kind of keeps pressure there. And then I also have a ledge on the edge of the board too, which helps a lot. I believe a stiffer plate also helps. Yeah, um, I actually want to experiment with 5mm thick plates on, like, specifically more gasket-mounted stuff. But uh, I'm not sure how that would work exactly. Or if it would really make any big difference. I also want to do stuff with, like, metal embedded in the plate. I have, I have underneath there somewhere, there's these big old steel rods that I got. Uh, like, 2mm diameter rods that I should be able to use to kind of reinforce a plate. But that's also something that I haven't done yet. Is it going to reach? Yeah, that will reach. We'll be good. Actually, that's perfect. It had just enough length. Awesome. Let's tin these up a little bit more. I'm going to fix that putty because I feel like I'm about to melt that, so let me just pull it over a little bit. Let's take this. We will be able to do a typing test on this tonight, which will be great because I think it's going to sound really good once it's all fully assembled. I make mine four millimeters, and I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, I think I, I think I remember that. Yeah, you do them at four mil. Um, you do the cutouts too, right? Like the recess section for the switches to click in. Because you can really make them as thick as you want if you do that. Um, I mean, according to how thick you want your board to be, but. It 
The one thing to always watch out for when you're wiring this is that you don't have like stray wires going in places you don't want them. You want to always control where these wires are because that can cause shorts. And that's a common thing people will do is they'll have like a, a random wire just connecting somewhere on a different column or row. It'll cause their entire board to short. And they'll be like, I have no idea why this is doing this. And then it's, it's kind of hard to catch too because they can be really thin. So this is the last one for the left side. Then we can start wiring up to the other side. Hand wiring seems so easy for you. Will you do a non-flat keyboard like concave ones? Because that seems like when hand wiring shines. I want to do an actual ergo build. I think what I'm going to do before any of that is I'm just going to build a dactyl. I think that's what I want to eventually build. But I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty reoccurring theme with a lot of my stuff is that I want to do it. But it's just I haven't done it yet. I mean, it's a good thing because I have like content for years to come, of course. But... Like, yeah, there's there's a lot of builds I want to do. I want to maybe design my own thing with, like, Ergogen. I have looked into doing, like, some, like, splayed pinky layouts, you know, where it's kind of the pinky goes, like, further down and stuff. But hand wiring is, I mean, that's the thing with hand wiring is it's really good for non-traditional layouts, right? Like, especially Ergo stuff. Because you can't really make PCBs, right? I mean, you can mess with, like, a flex PCB, but hand wiring is kind of where it would shine. All right, so we have all those wired up. If you ever make a Dactyl or Ergo video, I'm there for it. Yeah, no, I, I do have Ergo videos. If you search up the Scotto Ergo, uh, Joe, I remember you from last night too, nice name. <laughs> but uh, if you search up on my channel, you'll see the Ergo videos. I literally have a board called the Scotto Ergo, which is a, um, it's like a split Ergo that has like tilt and tenting to it, which is pretty decent. You might enjoy it. So when I ripped the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico controller off, or the the port on the Pico, I just tore it off, and I made a bunch of people mad in in YouTube Shorts because they're like, just use desoldering methods because you know they don't they don't watch the full context. They just see the context that I'm ripping a Pico off and destroying the port of the board. They don't see the context that like there's a reason I'm doing that was to put a GX16, but still funny. Have you tried AutoCAD before? I spent a lot of time learning the basic function. Now I kind of regret it because I can't remember anything on Shaper 3D. Um, I messed with F Fusion 360. That's the only one. But I can do 99% of anything I need to do on Shaper 3D. And it's just, it's so intuitive to me that I don't mess with any of the bigger programs for the most part. I do do a lot of Blender, like for my more organic modeling stuff. But um, for any like CAD stuff, I just ship it. I, I stick with Shaper. That's basically it. For, like, keyboards, the bigger programs are kind of overkill. Maybe if you're getting into, like, more Ergo stuff, yeah, they'd be a lot better. But very rarely will I ever jump into a full CAD program. I mean, I say that, like, few, like Shaper isn't a CAD program. It absolutely is, but it's dumbed down compared to the other ones in a lot of ways. So, all right, let's take this and route it through. <laughs> I'm getting the notification on Instagram for my account down for my live. For some reason, Instagram, after I posted it, set the live timer for like 8.45 instead of 8. So like a bunch of people are probably getting notified right now. So yeah. Wait, 300C, that is hot. Uh, Yes, 300C. That's what I do. That's what I do this part at. Um, Sometimes I'll go 350 for like when I'm going to copper. Just it gets more heat into it faster. If you're quick and you know what you're doing, you can do that. But if you don't, it might be a little bit harder. So we can go this side now. Where do these ones actually go? They have one, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four, right? Yeah. So we have those. The only time I really would recommend doing a lower temperature if you're doing like a, a uh, what's it called? A nice nano. Because they do have issues with their chips possibly burning out. So you want to do those at like 270, 280-ish. Because you can overheat the chip pretty much. Here for the music, honest. <laughs> the jazz. I enjoy jazz. You like jazz? <laughs> Some people might like might know that reference to B movie. <laughs> like jazz. All right, let's get this positioned a little better. This is the hardest part with doing these hand wire builds is like getting them positioned. I, I mean, what I'm doing it on camera because like I can't position them perfectly all the time. I just I'm trying to like get in these spots. And it's just hard. There we go. 
You like jazz. <laughs> What's this chip? This is a Atmega 32U4. This is just a Pro Micro. On my commission builds, I typically use Pro Micros, or, well, if they're designed with a Pro Micro, I won't switch to, like, an RP2040, because I just, I know this board works. I'm more, like, familiar with this, and I'm confident the person's going to have better luck with it, whereas the lesser-known ones that I've used newer, I don't really trust them as much. So I kind of stick with these. As we get further away, we need longer and longer strands of wire. I've cooked a sweet PCB with 350C before when soldering a power switch. <laughs> yep, uh, let me guess, you, you ripped off some pads probably? Is that what you did? I mean, when you're when you're doing PCBs too, that's something you have to worry about. That you don't have to worry about a hand wire. Because you don't have to worry about ripping off pads. You know, you're dealing with just copper here, so you're not going to like damage anything too much. You can melt some housings. You can always be careful of that one. What kind of flexible wires are those? These are um, silicone 28 gauge, I think. I think it's linked in my videos. I link wire somewhere that's not the same. I use the silicone wire now. It's really nice because it's heat resistant and flexible. I'm gonna be careful to not melt the case there too. And it, it is stranded wire, so it's not like solid core. So it's just easier to kind of get where you need. It's just a super long strand, though. I kind of only need about that much. It's like exponential. As you get further from the controller out this way, it gets longer and longer. So you have more and more cable to manage. And once you're towards the end, like the Scott 108, I had like literally multiple strands of wire that were like a foot long, over a foot long. So I'm like running these massive strands across the board. This music's Christmassy too. It's like we got all Christmas music going on. I'm not gonna knock it, but like, it's not Christmas time anymore, right? <laughs> really get that under there. Sometimes you start running out of room and you gotta like squeeze them. You also don't want to bend them because or break into the wire. You don't want it to short out so you kind of have to be really careful. I want to just get this one last one under there but we're gonna be able to do it. We're not gonna. We're just gonna put it up top. It almost was in my state. We had sudden snow just last week. It's very warm where I'm at now, and it shouldn't be this time of year, but we had snow last week, and then now it's like no snow. I mean, it was freezing last week. It was like, like under zero Celsius, like single digits Fahrenheit. Right, so there's those. I gotta say, this wiring is like... Some of my cleanest yet, actually. I'm very happy with how this is being wired. Or I guess some of the cleanest that I've shared. Because typically, like, ply and builds, I make them cleaner, but... This is definitely cleaner for what I normally do. I've been trying to make my wiring a little bit better. Still bugging me why my vial thing's messed up. That I can't switch my scenes. I keep thinking about, like, as I'm doing this, as I'm focusing on chat and everything, I'm still thinking, why is my macro pad not working? <laughs> I need to figure that out, because it was working fine earlier, and then sure as shit, as soon as I get on stream, it decides to not work right. <laughs> Just how it works. But, uh, LOL Celsius, we got him, he doxed himself. Uh, no, I say Celsius so people know. I'm in a Fahrenheit area, alright? I'm in a the freedom, freedom units. We use freedom units here. Freedom units. <laughs> I'm gonna bet it's a big wire right there. 
life of a streamer. Yeah, no, Zach, that's something I do worry about. <laughs> like, leaking something on stream that I shouldn't. I mean, it's all live, you know, you don't get any do-overs. I could do it with a delay, so I have, like, an oh shit button. I can cut the stream if I leak an address or something, but then I wouldn't be able to interact with you guys real time, so... I'm just very careful. And I do have a separate PC completely isolated from everything else, so, like, none of my real personal stuff's on it. That wire is really in there. Trying so hard to not break any of the adjacent wires to this one. There we go. Got it. All right. I tried to help. I have saved someone in the Discord while I was at work and noticed. Someone almost docks himself in the Discord? That happened? Is that what you're saying? You don't use a fan for the solder fumes? I do. I have a big... Well, I don't use a fan. I use a HEPA filter. Um, so, something common that people will think with solder fumes is that you can get those little fume extractors, right? They have a carbon filter on them. And all that does is removes the smell. A HEPA filter actually catches the shit in the solder, right? It catches the flux fumes and all that. So you want a HEPA filter. Um, and that's what I run it through. I have a big HEPA filter to my right that's kind of filtering everything for me. Keeps it real clean down here. I didn't always use that. And ever since I started using it, I feel better after soldering for hours. <laughs> I used to feel like trash after soldering before. I feel really bad, but now I don't anymore, which is nice. There's those. We have one more connection. Any more wire? Do I need another strand? I do. HEPA filter is the name? Uh, no, it's not. Just search up HEPA air filter. And pretty much most of them will work. The bigger, more expensive ones will be better because they have more airflow. Um, so I can have it off like two, three feet to my right and it will still suck the stuff up. Whereas smaller ones won't do that. They won't have as much power. But I'm um, just literally HEPA air purifier. I could link the exact one I use, but it's like $230. It's an expensive one. It filters our whole basement though, so. They also do make HEPA extractors for um, soldering, like actual soldering ones, but they get really expensive, like four or 500 bucks minimum. They have like hoses and stuff you can kind of direct right over your work area and kind of overkill for home soldering. Especially if you have access to like a window. If you can just vent stuff outside, just do that. That's even easier. If you live somewhere, you can do that year round. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Let me show you. There you go. This is a very hard part to show, and I always struggle in like, videos too to show this because like it's just all over the place. Route that through here. This is the part where I start getting excited too, because I only have two more columns to wire up. We'll put the keycaps on, flash some firmware, we'll have a board. Well, we actually gotta do the firmware first. I do the firmware first to test everything. So you put any shield between the little board, the wiring, or is the gap just big enough? What do you mean? Do you put any shield between the little board and the wiring? I mean, all I have right here is literally just wiring. It's just underneath. Or do you mean these here? These are protected by heat shrink, so it doesn't, like, it's just insulated at the intersections. This is that song from last night that sounds like Severance. It's a Severance song. It's not Severance, though. It sounds identical. This is the last one, and we should have full regular firmware on this. I say regular because we have to modify it to be a 4x12. Okay, 
go. I mean, between the pearl micro and all the copper wiring. Nope, I don't put anything. I just literally put that, close it up, and there's enough clearance that it won't touch anything on there, so it's fine. But uh, you could cover it in hot glue if you wanted to. You could just completely cover it, but you don't have to do that. There's no reason to. So what I can do now, though, is I can actually pop this out. Because by soldering in here, it kind of melts a little bit to the board. You can see it kind of melts it a little bit on there, which is fine because you just hot glue it in place. But let me put this off to the side so it don't melt that. Let's switch to the screen view. What I should be able to do, let's actually switch to this view. I can plug this in and we have just a complete naked board right now. So I'll power on. And I don't have my map on here. Uh, this is the default map, so this is a little bit hard because I typed Colmac. Uh, K is this? How do I? How do I QWERTY? Uh, B is it? Oh, here? No, that's I. O? Yeah. I'm just gonna type on this guy, keyboard. All right, let's test this a little bit just to make sure we got a lot of them. How do I QWERTY? What is this key supposed to be here? Oh no, that's because the thing's on there. I'm done. I'm done. These are these aren't active yet. We gotta do the firmware for those. All right, so we, it looks like we have everything. Is that space bar? Yeah, so that's space bar. That's perfect. Uh, we don't have these active yet either. So yeah, let's do the firmware. Let's let's get the firmware going for this. So we need to modify it to have additional columns and rows, which means we're gonna have to kind of heavily modify it slightly, slightly heavily. Let me unplug this. All right, so let's add. We're gonna use pins two and three. So we we'll use two for the left and three for the other one. Let's open up VS Code. Let's actually close this workspace down because I want to modify it on the repo first and then we'll be able to pull it in. Let's remove this folder, remove this folder, remove this one. All right. So let's open up. Scotto Elf. Where's the Elf? There it is. UMK. All right. So let's pull this in. I don't want to save that. Let's open this. All right, so let's go to our info.json. So we want to actually push everything over one column, right? So we have zero, zero. This should actually be... Well, we had to modify the KLE also. This is the boring part of the stream, too, where we have to do this. So let's actually do these first. Let's find our pins for our Pro Micro. All right, so let's look at our Pro Micro pins. Uh, look at this one. So we want, uh, can this show me this in full screen, please? Thank you. All right, so we want this first one to be D2, or well, is it D2? Are we looking at D2 here? Uh, two and three, yes, so we want that. Wow, each one of those folders is a different keyboard. Yeah, um, these are all my boards <laughs> made. <laughs> I guess when you put it that way, there's, there's a lot of boards in there. Uh, all right, so we want D1 and D0. So we'll have D1 here. D1. I will have to upload this to everything also, and then we'll do D0 over here. D0. So we should have those. I want to save this without formatting. Save without formatting. We want to push this matrix over. So the rows are fine. The left is fine. We just need to push this all over one. So let's actually take this. Let's delete this here. One through nine. So one through nine, and then that should be ten for the last one. Uh, yeah, ten, eleven. What's the window manager using in Windows? Is it Windows 11 default? Yeah, this is the default, which is actually kind of... I don't know how it works exactly, but you can kind of go like that, or maybe if you hold this. I don't know, there's like something you can do to activate it and make it bigger, or change the stuff you're going to be doing. Uh, so actually... We don't have to change this as heavily as I am. Let's just simply add another one. We just need a 9, 10, 11. So we need to add on here. Copy this twice. Am I right here? Wait, hold on. I'm thinking because this needs to... You yeah, know, that will make sense. 
That should be easy. So we have 10 here. And this will be 11. So that should be correct. Do the same here. We'll also have to modify which ones are connecting on the bottom, but we'll do that after these. This one. Alright, so there's those. Now we have to do these bottom ones. So I have to get these parts connected right. So let's take a look here at what we have. So we have 3, 1. So that should be 0, 1. So that should be right for that one. We just had to add one before this as zero. Am I right on that? So that's one, zero. All right, I have to think about this matrix because I want to make sure it still is compatible with the three by five or the, the five, the split five or the 10, the 10 layout. So I have to think if that's one, that means we're adding one as zero, right? So that's one, zero. Yeah, yeah. So we're simply adding one as zero. That's all we're doing. So it's not as complicated as I'm making it to be. We're literally just copying this. We're adding one here. We're naming this one zero. So we'll call this. My keyboard disconnected again. I don't know why. It's got to be this phone being in the way. It has to be. Yeah. So zero. Then we have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and then eight. So we'll have another one here. All right, so that should be the whole matrix now. That should be backwards compatible with what I currently have. Let's clean this up just a little bit. So that should be the full 48 keys I think it has. Don't need to change that. Nothing has to change in here. All right, let's modify the key map now. So we have to modify the key map to add additional keys. So all we're gonna do... Oh, we do have to change this. Let's just change this to layout. Change that to layout. Key map, all right, so let's add these here. We'll do KC underscore. Uh, what do we want for this? Let's do tab. I like this as enter, then SFT for shift, uh, or is that L shift, L shift, yeah. And align these. All right, that should be good on there. Uh, I put caps on the right, or do we want quote there? That the proper quote one, yeah. And I'll just do transparent for the rest of them. So we'll do KC underscore BS, PS, or BC, just for backspace. That seems good enough. We'll just do that for the default. Then we can see if we get it compiling. Let's do that. Let's do transparent. Here also. Oh, I do have to add the bottom ones actually. I didn't think about that. Um, let's just do this as KC underscore escape, I guess. That might be about right. Right? That should be fine. Uh, let's do KC underscore. Let's do escape on both halves. That's probably good enough. that one. Let's also add them here. Okay. 
there's a second layer done. So we'll try to probably compile this one before anything else, um, before I start modifying all the other key maps. We will have to do the vile key map too. We will have to change this, but I don't think it's going to be that complex. I don't think. Um, it might actually just be as simple as adding more to this. I don't think it's going to be that bad. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second, but... Hey, Joe. Follow your series since December. I'm making a custom keyboard. I finally finished my 3x3 macro pack. Got all the software set up today, and it's working great. That's awesome. I, I, so many people watch that video. That's like the first one they start with. And it, it, it either... They either do it and don't do anything else, or they do that, and then they dive down the rabbit hole, so... So which one are you? Are you going to dive down the rabbit hole, or are you just going to stick with the 3x3? these okay all right sure just you know spam my thing now this is actually starting to drive me insane with this bluetooth and like this isn't the board this is literally because the computer's like behind there and it keeps disconnecting like mid keystroke and it's just like it's just obnoxious i don't know why it keeps doing that gonna do it again wait for okay no we're good i don't know why it keeps doing this i'm gonna literally just plug it in and just get this connection because i i can't deal with that <laughs> i'm gonna bring a wired board down here eventually i this board i don't know why it doesn't like the room for some reason it just keeps disconnecting So there's all of those. That should be good. I think we have everything. All right, yeah, let's drag this into QMK and get it compiled. Let's get an actual full key map on it. Let's actually wire these up, though. We do have to do that. Have a great rest of your stream. Pop in and say thanks. Have a good night, dude. And also, if you're in, not in the Discord, join the Discord and uh, post some build pics. I'd like to see that of your first build. Can you add a cheap Bluetooth receiver plus a USB extension to bring it a bit closer? Eh, I could, but... I don't know. It's like literally three feet away. It's behind a monitor, though, so maybe it'd be better. I don't know. Um, what do I have to do here? I have to wire this up. So let's take this. We have... Where do we have these going, though? That's the thing. We have D1. So that should be over here. That goes to 1, and then we have... Okay. So yeah. So let's switch back here. Let's plug my iron back in. Let's just route the last two wires. Grab some red wire. Actually, I don't need that much. Take that much. We'll take this one. All right, so. Getting close to the end on this build. Getting close to being able to type hear what all the work sounds like. So I'll put this one on. What's this doing? Why is it moving all around? Two and three. Let's team it up. Perfect. should be the last of the soldering too after these two cables
Where'd my gum stuff go? I have another piece of gum to hold it where I want it. There we go. That's a little bit easier there. There's that one. We'll grab this one now and do the other side. Gum? <laughs> I'm calling it gum. It's 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 blue tech, but it's blue tech that's white, but I'm calling it gum, because it turns into gum if you get it too hot, it like melts and gets really nasty. So I'm calling it the gum. Alright, let's do this last connection, and then we can start doing our firmware. Or actually compiling. I probably should have started compiling now, but we'll compile it later. <laughs> we'll just deal with that. I still don't know why it takes so long to compile on Windows. I really don't get that. Like, it's not a slow computer, so it shouldn't take 10 years to compile, but maybe it's just that QMK Emesis. It's just slow. Because, like, when I say it's slow, I mean, on my Mac, it will compile firmware in, like, probably 20 seconds or less. On this computer, we're looking like a minute or two. It's just super painfully slow. Really get this routed in anymore. Not enough room. Through there, maybe. MSYS is known to be slow. Okay, well, then that explains it. I mean, it's painful. Like, it is painfully slow. Like, it is torturous sometimes waiting for this stuff to compile, especially when you're like iterating through builds and you're just waiting half the time for it to do stuff. It's just a pain. I'm just going to route that one, kind of. Eh, well, we can go here, probably. Is it coming out or no? Where is that? There we go. Alright, there's the last wire all ran. Get this underneath them. Pin that up. Alright, and then put this on here. Need to gum it down again. Put it in place. Let's actually get this underneath here, too. Alright, let's try to do this without burning myself. All right, there's everything connected. We are good to go. All right, so we can start getting the firmware. Pick up the gum, the ball of gum, ball of gum. Pick that there. All right, so let's do our firmware now. Let's get this finalized. So this should all be good. Uh, you know what? Let's just do. Uh, let's see if we can change this really quick. Should be able to. God, this keyboard is not balanced. There we go. <laughs> is the gum reference making you queasy or something? Uh, so we have four and twelve. Two ten. Alright, so there's those. Alright, now I am going to have to pull this into the keyboard layout editor just to get an idea of what it's like. So I have no idea what this actually looks like. It's just this that I need. Right, so that should... Um, 
No, it's just these, okay. So this needs to be pushed over. What does it need to be pushed over? About there, right? Yeah. Two more keys. Did I wire those two? It's just three eight. Yes, three eight and three zero. Wait, no, not three zero. Three zero three one. Why is that three zero? Hang on. Um. Oh no, that's right. That's right. It starts at three zero. So I do need to move these back. So this one. Okay, no, that one shouldn't be three zero. Should it? Should be three one. Oh no, we're no, I'm I'm brain farting there. No, that is three zero. That's three zero. It's three zero three one three four three six seven, and then this should be three eight. So we can copy this. And we can go to our vile JSON. Delete all this. Paste it, save it. Alright, so that should be our vile JSON done now. Okay, key map C. Alright, so let's do this one, because this is actually actually we could just copy this key map. Literally just take that, paste it in here, and that should work. All right, so yeah, let's go compile that over in Vile now. So let's go to, let's copy all this. It will go to, uh, where do I have Vile stored? Vile, QMK, we have keyboards, and wired, Scotto keys, we have Scotto Elp. We will delete this, paste this in, and then we should be able to compile it. We can do QMK make keyboard and we'll do vial or QMK flash. We'll flash vial onto this. Everything else should be the same. But hopefully this compiles first try. I think it will. I'm pretty confident it will. To save everything, that's the other question. If I didn't save everything. Ah, uh, no, we're good. Alright, so let's see what this does. This is just painfully slow, though. Let's see what we have for music while this does this. Let's see if there's anything else we can get on Epidemic Sound. Lo-fi beats. Okay. Let's go for some lo-fi. Let's see if there's actually a way to speed up Emsys, too. Is there a way to s how to make faster? <laughs> Slow by design. Um, Emsys two. This is supposedly MSYS2 because of what I have installed, so I guess there's no way to make it faster. Great. So this is what we get to stick with. Alright, shit. Um, 43 arguments, but takes just 42. Um, 43 arguments, takes just 42. Should be 36 here. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. That's right, though. Hold on. It's just not 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, we're missing one here. We're missing our space bar. You could use WSL instead. What is that? Do you have a link for it? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wait, no. So we have... Zero, so we have one, two, or no, we have zero, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven. We're missing seven. We need seven in there. So this is seven here. 
then that should work. Let's also modify in the file firmware, file info JSON. Okay, so this should now compile properly. Windows subsystem for Linux. It runs Linux on your Windows machine closer to native than normal VM. I've actually considered on this machine here installing Linux. Um, I mean, Windows 11 is fine on it, but if I installed Win like Linux, I could actually just use the stuff better. I wouldn't have to deal with all this like weird Windows stuff because um, Linux is closer to the Mac than Windows is to Mac. So it'd probably be easier, but I don't know. That might be an option. Layout on declared. That is correct. Let's fix that. Why would that be undeclared? We named layout. Layout, layout. Layout, layout. Does this need to be named layout? Uh, let's look at here in the MK firmware. Let's just pull this in. Take a look. So let's see what they do here. Actually, you know what I could look at instead of doing this? I can just look at the Scouter deck because that's how I did that one. Let's remove this folder. Why is it not? Did that not remove that really? Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's go to... Go to Scato Keys, we'll go to Scato Deck, we'll go to QMK, we'll pull in the info JSON uh, layout. Like, no, that all looks right. So, why would that not close this and open that back up? Uh, let's go back, hand wired, Scato Keys, go to Scato Help that into here remove this folder add to workspace all right so we have info json we have in here we have our whole matrix so that looks about right so that looks correct the layout layout do we not name the layout properly in keymap.c well it says layout so why would that not compile Oh, well, this is part of it. Um, quote undeclared here. Oh, wait, that's actually part of it. Let me cancel that. So this should be KC underscore quote. We'll name that KC underscore quote. I have to fix that here too. So that air could actually be throwing everything off too. Possibly. Let's see what this does. Start cleaning up my mess a little bit, probably, too. All right, so layout defined here. Oh, only 41 given. Okay, wait, that's probably it. Are we missing a comma? No. There's something, this is another situation where there's just something stupid that I'm missing, and it's just not... Uh, we have everything there. Oh, right here. This bottom row, you can see it's missing these. So we need to add another one in here. So we'll do KC underscore transparent. Okay, so there's that one. We'll add another one on the end. Alright, and that should compile now. It is getting cold down here. I'm going to put a sweater on. Sweater jacket. in my basement it's so cold down here it's like 60 year round oh toasty let's go oh it's still not compiling what do we have now did i not oh shit i saved the wrong key map that's why 
Let's save the proper one, which is vile. We have to go in here and do the same thing. So do that. My hair is all like staticky after I put this thing on. It's like it feels like it's sticking up. All right, Casey and Transparent. All right, this should compile now. Should. Let's see what we got. Come on, compile. All right, that's good. That's promising. All right, yeah, this is gonna compile this time. We need a tweezer still. Put my other tweezer away because I don't need this one. Got the cap for it. Where the cap go? Right there. So after I get this working too, I should be able to. I do want to change in the configuration. I want to change the reset keys. So this should be, I mean, this is fine here, but we want to have the bootloader mode zero, 00. We want this to be zero, 01, just because of how it's set up. And then where do I define that? Is there a config file that I define that in? Let me search it up really quick. Let's find out. It's called boot magic. I think we do it in the... I think it's the config, right? Where is it? Uh, QMK info JSON. This is actually how you do stuff now. Yeah, right here. So we boot magic, then we can do matrix. So we have boot magic. How do they, how do, they do that? So we need this in order to reset the board, and I'm changing how it works, kind of. So we can go boot magic enabled. Um, just an object. I think it'd be like this. Enable equals true, and then matrix should be, yeah, matrix will be zero, uh, one to reset the board. Yeah, so that should be correct. Let's, uh, recompile this just to get that in there. And then I should be able to, so what I'll be able to do by doing that is I can hold this key right here when plugging it in and it will reset. So I'll plug the board in and then I'll enter bootloader mode so I don't have to short the pins every single time. I'll have an actual key to do it. But, um, is that making this? Yes. It's compiling. Wait, no. It's not a type of Boolean. What? Why is this giving me so many errors? What the hell? Did I cancel this? Is this frozen now? Okay, so we have... Where'd my air even go? Oh, no, I cancel and then it, like, recompiled? What the hell? It's not a type boolean. Why would that not... That. Matrix default zero zero. Enabled equals true. We have boot magic. Enabled equals true. Zero zero. That should be right. Let's save this again and try it. I'm gonna close this down too because I think it's airing out. QMK flash handware, it's gonna help a file. All right, let's see what this does. Matrix size. Matrix, matrix size? What does it mean matrix size? Do I need to define a matrix size? Uh, 
Um, let's search this up in our QMK folder to see if we can find another example of it. This is a tip that I can actually give to a lot of people. If you're like looking at a feature and it's not like working with the documentation, pull up the official QMK repo and then just run like a search on everything for like whatever you're trying to find. So I'm going to look for boot magic. So we can find this and then yeah, so now we can see some examples of like configurations. So like this one here. So we have boot. Okay. So it's, it's a separate one. I get it now. I get how that works. So instead of that, what we have is just boot magic should be true here. So we'll enable true, and then down below we'll actually enable the feature by doing boot magic. There we go. That should be proper now. This should allow us to actually flash it. Yeah, there we go. So this should work. The QMK documentation isn't always the best. It's sometimes just like, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, but that's the good thing is that there's a lot of other people have used these features, so you can kind of find it when you need to. But this will slowly now compile. We'll be able to flash the board. Let's see if we get something that works. Got a bunch of mess here that I got to clean up. So let's pre-plug this in. We can switch the overhead. I'm just gonna short out the two pins there on it, the ground and reset pin to get it to activate. All right, so that is ready. We will now short them out. All right, we're gonna flash. And then if everything works, so this should be Q. All right, so yeah, that is working. We have tab. All right, so we have tab. We have backspace. We have caps lock. Or no, that's quote. I put that to quote. That is right. All right, so we have everything here now. We have a working board. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to finish up this firmware because I don't want this just kind of sitting here. I want to make sure that I get it into the repo the way it should be. So let's go to keyboards. Or no, where do I have it? I have Scuttle Help. So we have key map C. This is fine. We have this key map is fine. Are these the same? Let's actually just copy this whole thing. We'll paste it in here. Save it. Then the last thing I want to do is go to Scotto and I want to just fix this key map so I have mine also. We'll just add these. This is gonna take this is a lot. Oh my god. Alright, so let's do KC underscore. So I have to update all my blog posts and stuff with this too. Uh, this will be enter. Uh, LSFT. The beauty of a handwire board is if you're not doing a 4x12 layout, you can literally just leave this off. You don't even have to worry about it. So, it's kind of nice. I uh, want this to be ESPC backspace uh, caps, or no, quote. I'll do R shift. If it does, let me plug this in so it stops doing that with the Bluetooth. So there's those, and then we can do the transparent on these. Let's actually fix these also. <laughs> Look at this tap dance function, how big it is. Holy crap. Um, what I'm going to do for this, just because I'm lazy, is I'm just going to do it messy and just make it work. And pacing underscore escape. I can prettify this later, but for now, I just want to get these kind of working. Or I'm not even going to worry about this now, actually. I want to get this board working, so I'll, I'll deal with that later. I'm going to do... What did I change in here? All right. So save that. We have a vial on the board now. What I can do next is I want to assemble this into the case. So I'm wondering if I want to use hot glue for this one or not. Or do I want to use UV resin? Because I've kind of been doing that too. Um, let me also fix these on the back because they're kind of poking up a little bit. Wireless core in Lily 58 has wired mode, right? Yeah, I'm plugging this in on the wire, and then it's like, they're wireless between the halves, but I plug it in on the master half, and then it actually, like, makes it work better. So you can use it that way, but... Like, it's, it's, I don't believe it's the board that's causing this issue. It's, like, the computer being behind the monitors. I'm pretty sure. So, a little annoying, but, all right, yeah, let's use some UV resin for this. I'm going to do that. 
because I feel like that will be a better option here. We'll grab some resin. We'll grab some gloves. I really liked how I'd used the UV resin on my last board, so I thought that on this one too, it would probably look nice also. So that is what I'm gonna do. Put these on so I don't get resin on my hands and cause issues. My UV lamp. Right, so we wanna put that there. How suitable is it for gaming? The Lily 58 or corn, is that what you're asking about? How suitable those would be for gaming? You do typically want to do this in layers too, so I'm going to do it in small layers. Are you just screwed to the bottom, the standoffs? Uh, yeah, I put those on in the last video, so part one of this I did the standoffs. Um, they're just screwed to the bottom. I'll show that after I get everything assembled here. We'll start this with just getting some resin on there to hold it. It's no longer tacky, perfect. Some up here. I think that looks way cleaner too. Like, it doesn't want to do it, but um, doesn't want to switch. I think it looks way cleaner with resin than the hot glue. I just, it looks really good. And I do have to remember to get a picture of this. So, um, how suitable is it for gaming? Um, basically, I mean, you can. You can definitely game on them. I don't like this type of layout for gaming, though. The column stagger, I prefer just an ortho board. So, if you can go with ortho, do that instead. Put that on there. And my only question with UV resins, I don't think it'll be fragile. I mean, it's it's strong. It's kind of flexible, actually. So let's solidify those. Get a little bit more on these edges to really hold it in place. And because it's thin, it should kind of seep in. that. I want to be looking at this UV light as I use it, but I'm looking on my monitor. That's kind of cool. You can see that the solder flux actually glows. Uh, this is technically black light, so it's like fluorescing underneath, which is kind of cool. That should be on there. Just really beam it with light. It says like three to five minutes on the bottle, I think, but um, yeah, I don't typically go that long. So I do want this to maybe be a little bit flexible, but that should be good. What we can do now is take off these gloves, assemble the board. So let's take this and get our wires in here. Yeah, that feels good. Let me tip this over too, just to get any possible like stuff out of it in case there is stuff in there. I think we're good. Oh right, yeah, that wiring is good. We'll take this. We have some screws here. I'll grab a screwdriver. And typically I'll test these for a few days before I send them out just to make sure there's nothing like risky with them. Um, make sure that nothing's gonna like be shorting out. So I will probably be dailying this for the next few days. Would a 3D printed latch top cover work better for the MCU? You can't remove the resin, can you? Um, you could remove the uh, resin. I mean, typically when I do hot glue, resin's a little bit harder, I would say, actually. But there are ways that people have done, I know, to make it work with a, like, a latch over it. I've just never designed anything for that because the resin works well or the, or the glue. Um, resin or glue, whichever one you use. 
so I've never really changed it, but I would like to make it a little bit better if you want to remove it in the future, because as of right now, yeah, it's it's pretty hard to remove, but... But yeah, this is coming together now. Oh, shit, I didn't get a picture of the wiring. I'm gonna open this up before I get all the screws in. I wanted to get a picture of that, so I am gonna share this board on Reddit. Let me grab these out. Luckily, I only had four screws in instead of all of them. I mean, there's only 11, but still. It's a little annoying if you get all the screws in and then you have to pull them all out. All right, there we go. So let's pop that out. So yeah, there's the controller. Looks pretty nice. All right, let's grab a photo of this. All right, now we can put it together. Yeah, that wiring is like perfect too. Like it doesn't interfere at all. Another tip is only start on the side that you have your controller on with your screws, because if there's any wires there, you want to catch that early before you get them all in, um, in case you need to like move them around. But we're pretty good on this one, so I'm not too worried about that. There's those. My camera's just focusing on my hand because it does not like to focus on stuff behind my hand. It's just like, hey, there's a hand there. Let's focus on that. Not not the obvious main thing in the camera. Get the hand. I really like how this board's all purple too. It's pretty nice. Is it M2 screws? Yeah, these are M2. These are M2 by five screws. Um Anything between, so for the plate, I'd use M2x5 or M2x6. On the bottom with the countersunk holes on my boards, these work with M4 to M6. So, or, M, or not M, M4 to M6, a length of 4 to 6 millimeters, but they're all M2 screws. So 4 to 6 on the bottom countersunk, uh, 5 to 6 on the top for the plate. All right, there's everything on there. Have a board. Keycaps, let's pop those on. Let me grab another picture of just what this looks like without any keycaps on it, because it looks really cool. It's kind of like the Glarses board, actually. <laughs> it's all purple. Should at Glarses. All right, let's get our space bar on. No binding, perfect, let's go. I'm really excited. My type reactive wireless corn gets here tomorrow. It'll be my first split ergo board. Yeah, that's what I use. I, I love it. It's just that my computer down here doesn't like Bluetooth, so it keeps disconnecting. But I'm probably going to get a Bluetooth adapter so it doesn't keep doing that. Ooh. Ooh that's going to sound good. All right. Now, these do have orientation. They have those on the back, the fuzzy. So it goes to the back like that. That's just kind of how it should be. But it's all coming together now. It'd be an actual board. Now let's hope that I printed enough keycaps. I'm pretty sure I did, because I counted, but there's always a chance that I randomly lost one. You never know. We'll see. I don't think I did, but it's it's possible. I might have to reprint a keycap. Which would really suck if I did, because these are multi-material and they waste so much material and take so long to print, so it'd be a long time. I mean, literally it'd be like tomorrow, but still. It'd just be annoying if I had to reprint one because I lost one. But this is looking cool. Getting excited. Too bad I gotta send it to the, the commission person. I can't just keep it. I, I gotta get rid of some of my boards. I have too many boards. I don't like in the middle there. I'm gonna have to look at that. Let me pop that keycap off. Now, when you pop off keycaps on a hand wired board, it's always better to kind of wiggle them off like this instead of yanking straight up, because if you yank them straight up, they can actually rip out the switches because they're not held in by a PCB. 
Okay, that's a little better. I don't like this one either. Pulling it across the room. Okay. One of these should actually be a homing key. Is it? Is that one it? There it is. Yo, what's up, Scotto? How's it going? What's up? We're just about to finish this board and get a typing test on it. Just a few moments. And I'm very happy with the color theme on it. It's not good. Is there any issue flashing a firmware with a nice view code without the screens installed? They're out of stock everywhere. Um, I just don't, th it won't activate the screen install. Like, if you don't have screens, it just won't run a screen. So there shouldn't be any issue there. It should be fine. Yeah, I do like the dots. It's almost trippy looking at it like that, though. Like, there's all these, like, dots everywhere. Oh yeah, that's feeling good. Are they flat? No, they're not. They're scooped slightly. It's like a one millimeter indent. So a, a fairly moderate, like mild scoop, but it does have a scoop. But that is the board. That's what it looks like. All right, cool. Uh, let's add on some feet on the bottom so it has some rubber to pad it. Um, here are those screws that I was mentioning earlier. You can see they're just countersunk into the board. So they fit pretty good like that. Uh, I will use six of these little rubber feet on this one. Four on this main section. That's a sexy build for sure. Thank you. I, I like the color choice they went with. I thought it was a little wild at the time, the blue and pink and purple, but then the more I built it, I was like, all right, that's going to look pretty cool. So it does indeed look cool. So put these down here. And I will have to fix all my firmware later off stream, but there's the board. There it is. It's over here. All right, yeah, let's uh let's type on it. So let's see what it sounds like. So what I can do is I can go to monkey type and then I'll switch my camera in a second. Uh, let's plug it in. Shit, I am on. Let me switch over to vial really quick. So let's let's just switch this to. So we have, everything's on here. That's good. Let's just rebind it to uh, U W F P G. J L, what is it? Y O U L. Yeah, that's that's core. Is that Cole Mac? Q W F P G J L, no, J L U Y. And then uh, I put backspace there. There we go. A R S T D H. A-M. Yeah, there we go. So that should be Colmac now. Which means I should be able to actually use it. Uh, is my spacebar not working? Tell me my spacebar's not working. Do I not have a spacebar? Oh, wait, hold on. Let's change that to space for now. I have a tapping term. Um, 
I have a bottom row. Um, hang on, hang on. My matrix might be wrong. Let's see. Let's do a matrix test. All right, so our bottom row, I think, is incorrect. Or I might have knocked a pin loose. I think I might have knocked a pin loose. Let's see. I know. Did I reset it? The joys of hand wiring. This sometimes happens. Um, we have those. So that's working. So we have the left one. Do I have my matrix reversed, possibly? Let's see here. We have a zero, 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 one. The three, zero should be here. I might have reversed these. Possibly did. Let's see. Yeah, because these are doing things. Um, what is that one doing, though? That's escape. Yeah, my, my bottom matrix is reversed. There's something wrong here. Um, three zero three one three two. Should be three zero. Let me look at my picture I just took of it. Let me see. Because I think I'm going the opposite direction. Right? So. No, that seems right. Um. Zero, so that's seven. One, so we have three, one, three, one, three, two, three, four. That is right. Um, love your vids plus tutorials helps me a ton. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the donation too. Appreciate it. I'm glad you like them. We are trying to debug a keyboard right now, so we're in the we're in the depths of um, why is this not working right now? Uh, three, one, three, two. Is the rules.json incorrect? What's on the bottom of my mouse too? What the hell? Oh, it's like a... Alright, let's see what we have in vile. We have vile, json. My favorite thing to do after a long build. Yeah, um, I have no idea why this bottom row isn't working. Um, because it is actually working, it's just not fully working, right? So let's go to keyboard tester. I can't, I can't press spacebar because I don't have a spacebar right now. Let's see what we have. Let's see what these keys are even coming up as, if anything. So that one's Windows. That's Alt. All right, so then it dies off here. So would that actually... Oh, wait, that's why, isn't it? Um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Zero, one. So that one's right. And we have two. Three. Yeah, so this should be three. Okay, that's what it is. So this should be three. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to change the matrix for the actual board, I think. Um, with the way I did this, I think. Let me see. Zero, one, two, three, four. So spacebar is not on four on this one. It's actually on five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's on six. So spacebar is on six, seven, eight, nine. That makes sense. Um. So I am gonna have to update this here. I'll have to do this all off stream because this is gonna be a lot of like updating documentation. But what we have to do right now is we have zero. So we have. 0, 1, so this is 1, which is this here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, because I have the photo here also, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that one's 5, so it is 5, so it's 5 instead of 4, was it originally 4? Zero, one, two, three, four. So it was four originally, so it's pushing over five. Then we have six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so then we have nine here. I think. I think this makes sense. I think so. All right, let's see if this compiles now. Let's see what we got. So if we run the command again, we'll be able to just reset this, but we can flash it with a vial. This should hopefully work. I 
I was like, oh shit, my my spacebar is not working. What did I break? <laughs> and then it just turns out that I did the code wrong. <laughs> Classic. But will this actually compile? That's the other question. So there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's too many here. We have too many here. Hold on. This isn't going to compile. This is going to air out. Yeah, yeah. So we have zero, one, two. We don't need this one. You didn't change X values. Oh yeah, good. Uh, that's just a position of them. That is true though. I can change those. Thanks for that catch. Seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. Wait, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's right now. So everything should be correct. And there we have X values. Okay. So realistically, what I could actually do with this is I could leave it as four and just keep the firmware so that people know to connect that to four here. So zero, one, two, three, four. Now that's going to be five no matter what. So that should be five. Um, no, that's not going to be. I'm brain deading right now. I'm trying to think. This is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 4 on this one. It would be 5 on the longer one. So that means you have to wire it from here. So I think we should leave this as 5. So you can wire it to this one on one board. Leave it on this one. as you go. Yeah. So that makes sense. I don't think this has to change anything either. Um, does it have to change anything? thinking how this would work. I mean, it'd just be on 9 then, right? Just be on this different pin. Yeah. That makes sense, I think. I think so. Let's uh, let's just flash this real quick. So it should be able to hold this button. It'll put into bootloader mode. Yep, that worked perfect, so that's good. Alright, this will erase the chip. We'll flash our board. We should... There we go. Now we have a space bar. Let's go. So we have a actual working space bar. We jump into vile. It's just gonna freak out for a second here. Let's uh let's reboot vile. Let's actually force quit vile. Oh, no, it's on the other screen. Why the hell is vile? Why where is vile right now? Hold on. Oh, it's oh yep, it's not responding. Classic. Oh, there we go. Wait, are we good? No, I gotta force quit this. For some reason, it's freaking out. What the hell is it? Am I just dumb? Where's file? There it is. Okay, so we can end this, and then we can just relaunch it, and we should have the board detected now. Okay, there we go. So we have this, we have spacebar, we have, I have to do this again, Q, W, F, P, G, J, L, U, Y, backspace, A, R, S, T, D, H, X, C, V, B, this is K. All right, we should, at this point, have a working board. So if I go to a website, Uh, we have a enter key. Uh, enter right there. Okay, so we have this. Let me just see. Okay, so that does work. We have a working board now, which is perfect. What we can do now is the best part of this video, or stream, and that's a typing test. So I can clean up my desk a little bit here. What we can do is leave this full screen, switch to the beautiful typing view, and then we can actually type on it. So let's pause some music. We'll pause the music. We'll get this here. We'll do a 30 second test. And then, is that mic working? Can you guys hear this mic? Can you hear the board? Uh, can you hear this? Does this sound good? Let me actually turn this off because this thing's probably really loud. Let me try this again. Is Vial just an alternative to Via? Yes, it's um, it's a better alternative because you don't have to like go through their repo to get support for it. But uh, let's let's do this typing test for real now. Let's actually let's see what we get. I'm aiming for a hundred. Come 
Why am I activating my microphone? Hold on, hold on. What am I doing here? Let's try this again. Let's try this again. What am I what am I doing? Do I have my spacebar set to the because it's set to a multi-function normally? Let's just set that to yeah, that's why. Um spacebar on this board by default is set to control when you hold it and spacebar if not. So I was basically kept control clicking stuff. You can mess with the tapping term in there. So like if you mess with um you can't really see this, but if you mess with the tapping term, you can actually change it. Uh there's this right here. So you can mess with that stuff to make it better, but let's try this for real now. That's a bad start. What am I doing? What am I doing? Hold on. Is it still set to... Why is it still set to that? Did I not save it? Do I have to save the key map in order for it to update? Let's refresh this and see what it's doing. Because it keeps like... Yeah, yeah. so why is that... It's like hard stuck on com control. Um, Let's close this down and see what it says. Let's do a matrix test. Let's just see if we can unlock this. So we should be able to hold these keys. Interesting. Okay, we have something weird going on still. Something's weird with the code, and it's not liking it. Um, two eleven. This is all fine. Let's try rebooting it. Sometimes a reboot. Let me also switch to my screen here. We're in full debug mode at this point. Because that's pressing Windows key. Like, why would that be pressing Windows key when we don't even have that bound anywhere? That's that's my question. And I don't think it's... Because if it was shorting out, it would be doing something else. So it's not a short. Because it wouldn't only be on hold, right? If it was shorting out, it wouldn't just be on hold. What did that say? Vile's giving me an error. And it keeps crashing. So we can't unlock it with this, but this is also just kind of stuck. So let's end task. Let's go back to Vile. Let's see. All right, so we have everything on here. This looks correct. Your wireless corn is mad and trolling you. I don't think that's what it is. Um, let's unbind all these and see. Okay, we have a short between. So we do have a short here. We have a short between control and this key. So I am going to have to pop this open and take a look. There's something going on inside. Let's take a look here. All right, so switch back to that. Let's pop off some of these keycaps. Let's also play music more. Um, actually, I might not have to pop off the keycaps. I can just go from the back. I can pop these out, so then I don't have to do that. So there is a short somewhere. I'm assuming. I mean, there might not be, but that's what this is indicating right now, is that there's a short between spacebar and that left key. Instead of having to take all the keycaps off, we can just pop open the back. So let's find out what is wrong with this. But this is also the reason why on like commission builds, I'll run them for like two or three days before I ship them out just to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen. Um, all right, so where is our short here? So we're shorting out on this key, which doesn't make sense actually. There's nothing there. Hang on. Hang on. Let's let's see here. Um, I don't see anything that indicates a short there. Let's see if we have a continuity issue. Let's see what we got here. Let's grab a multimeter. 
have a multimeter off to my thing here, but all right, let's see what we got. So the keycap pink dot is work a bamboo printer. Yeah, it's all, it's all bamboo labs on these. So that's not shorting out there. That's connected. Unless it's that diode. Does it not like that diode? So let's see if if we remap this on the computer to like a one. Let's just see what happens if we change it to like one. So let's go in here. We'll go to the ELP. So let's change this to one and see what happens if, or actually are there tap dance? No, no, it's not that, okay. Let's see what happens if we hold. No, that doesn't. Why is there, so what, what is it triggering on hold? It's like it's stuck on, um, Do we have, hmm, or actually, wait, would that have, to, oh, you know what, and nah, this isn't even the board, oh my god, I'm, I'm dumb, I am dumb, <laughs> I'm, it's this, it's the vile JSON, I, okay, alright, so yeah, vile JSON is incorrect, so this needs to match our matrix, that's all that this was, oh my god, so I took the whole thing apart, I didn't even need to do that, so we have 0, 1, 2, we have this one as the matrix key, it's 5, and then we have seven, eight, nine. All right, okay, let's reflash this. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the board at all. I didn't think I wired it in correctly. Everything looked fine inside, so that didn't make any sense to me. But because like if there was a short, I mean a short typically wouldn't be like that key. There wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like this key and this key shorting out. It'd be like the entire column would be shorting. So, I don't know. I bet I could probably print that quality on my Prusa, but man, oh man, it's a nice thing you get that box. Yeah, um, I did no tuning to my bamboo at all. It just worked. So, um, and Prusas are pretty expensive. I mean, bamboo's expensive too, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I did a uh, classic move there of not having the proper, <laughs> the proper info JSON. So. Great. Let's let this compile and we'll be able to flash the board again. And then it should actually work. Be nice if Vile could compare InfoJSON to uh, the actual thing. Wait, the board is 3D printed. Yeah, fully 3D printed. Keycaps are 3D printed. So those are all printed. The board itself, 3D printed. Nice textured bottom. A bit of fuzz on it. Fully printed. I tried I tried printing the keycaps multiple times today and the overhangs for the stems are just not working. Did you you tried it at 0 0.12? Because 0 0.12 is like essential. Um and probably speed too. I'm still going down in temp and print speed, but I don't know if it'll work. Um temperature, I print them at 220 on my bamboo, but it prints pretty fast, so probably like 200 to 210. Huh. Um do you post some pictures in the Discord? I want to see how they're failing actually, because I don't know how they fail for others, because I don't they don't fail for me, like they work. Um, so that'd be helpful if I could, like, see. Is this gonna ever compile? There we go. Alright, so this should... Oh, perfect, doesn't even need to do a full reflash, let's go. Alright, flash that, and then we should not have an issue anymore. Alright, cool, so we have that. Let's, uh, close this before it airs down again. Give me a sec, I'll ping you in printing. All right, yeah, do that, I'll take a look. All right, so let's open Vile. All right, so now we have, that looks correct. So now we have space. Now in theory, if I hold space, all right, there we go. We have actual space working, so. All right, we're good, we're good, we fixed it. Let's uh put this back in and make sure everything's good. I also wanna get that wire out of there. Good thing I opened this, there's just a piece of silicone wire just sitting in there. I mean, it's not gonna cause an issue or anything, but just, you know, I don't want that in there. So take that out, we will get this down of here too. Let's also blow this out, just to make sure there's nothing sitting in there. Let's also get these little thingies off, like some flux left over. I have issues with tolerances with the cross and stems and printing keycaps. Yeah, that's the issue with uh, keycaps whenever you print them, either resin or FDM. It really doesn't matter which way, they're just a pain to print. Because, I mean, we're talking pretty tiny tolerances here. But we can pull this now. So there. 
flip it over. Deep pressure. Leave a gum in there. Yeah, you can put some of the put some of the blue tag gum in there. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. These back ones going way easier than the plate because they're shorter. So all this time though, I thought it was a hardware issue. Looked at the hardware is fine. Turns out that I didn't put the proper key codes in on the vial JSON. Could you show time lapse of something of your printing some of these things? Um, I could include it. I actually, I do. Actually, shit, I do have that. I can show that right now. Actually, let me uh, let me do that. I can show you. Let me get this together. I don't know if it will actually work, but we can see. Are those Aco lavender tactiles? Yeah, they're lavender purples. Lavender purple uh, Aco switches. I can show you this. So we can switch here. We can look at Orca Slicer, and we should. Uh, time lapse. Yeah, we have some time lapses in here. Oh, funny enough, I have this one. Let's download this one. Uh, was that the right one? Don't tell me they just deleted it. Did that magically delete it? Did that magically delete what I wanted? Downloads. I think that deleted what I wanted. Um, I have this one. I'll let these download. Do you change anything other than the layer height? I have more issues with layer width. Um, no, just the layer height. I mean, I have most of my settings set already anyway, but... Yeah, we'll let this download. Let's see what we get now when we plug this in. I still have a lot of work to do on this board, but I'm going to do a lot of it off-stream too, because I have to update all my, like, blog posts and stuff. But we can switch to the typing view. We can go to monkey type. And now we can get a real typing test, because the board will actually work. So... Let's do an actual typing test. I take that back. Uh, it's still in QWERTY. I have to, I have to reflash it to Colmac. Um, let's just do that really quick. We're almost there. We're almost there. QWFP G J. Wait, no. QWFP G J L U Y backspace A R S T. Uh, D H N E I O. Test invalid, it's fine. Uh, change this to K. All right, now we can get a real test. Let's let's do this for real. All right, so here we go. So we have levels on this mic. We should be good. All right. And three. Um, is audio strange for anyone's? Yes, it should be strange because I have I have two mics currently. Uh, so I have, I have two mics running. Um, I run the top one here and then this one because my main mic, let me switch this to a view that's not going to do that. My main mic up top has a noise gate on it so when I don't talk it cuts off but on the typing test I have a secondary mic. But um, what do you guys think? Does it sound good? Does this sound good or not? I, I think, what's it sound like? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm pretty happy. What is what is Fortism saying? End present same where think I turn not. I can't I can't comprehend that right now. Um, I know you answered this before, but why Colmac and not Colmac DH? Because it works out on my iPad. That's why. A nice clicky, but not too clicky. Yeah, I, I call it clacky. Clacky. Like, thocky and clacky is what I call these switches. I think they're kind of, like, in between. So they're kind of like both. But, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know if, 
I don't know if people like it, but when I print a decent shell with tactile switches, I love the sound. Makes me think of building things in Lego Star Wars. Yeah, um, it kind of does have like that clacky, like Lego-y sound to it. But I think what I'm going to do at this point is I got a bunch of work I got to do off stream still. I have to, let me play my music so I can hear stuff. I still have to do like the blog update for this. I have to change the middle key and all that stuff. And it's like 10 o'clock. So I think I'm going to end this. We successfully built this. We figured out the issues with it. Everything works now. Um, it looks really good. I'm very happy with how it came out. I hope the client hap is happy with it. Um, you know, these are the colors they pick. So, but yeah, it looks great. I'm happy with it. And yeah, um, it's like 10, 20. We've been going for like two, two hours and 20 minutes. I got to eat and uh, do a bunch of code stuff for this still. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave any last, any last words before I dip on out. I'll probably be streaming again in a few days too. Um, I don't know what I want to stream next, but I'll stream. I'll start doing more streams. I got to do videos, though. I have some videos I have to get to first. So, um, actually, wait. Someone did pig me in Discord. I did want to see that first. Let me see. Uh, printing. All right, let's see how this failed. So, this is how it's failing. What's the Discord? Um, in the description, there's a link to it. Or just scottocubes.com slash Discord. Interesting. Hmm. Is that the top or the... Uh, that's the bottom. That's got to be. That looks like a cooling issue. Crank up your cooling on your printer if you can. So that that definitely looks like a cooling issue if you're still here. This definitely is like, cause it's basically printing and it's not cool. Or, so actually there is a setting. You can try minimum layer time too. So if you want to fix this, minimum layer time and uh, cooling issues. But yeah, I'm going to get off. I'll, I'll respond to you too. Cause I don't know if you're still, I think you are actually, you're Ricky, I'm pretty sure, right? But uh, yeah, I'm at hundred percent fan speed. Hmm. You might need better fans. That might be part of it too, but I'm getting off guys. Thanks for hanging out. This was fun. I got to go eat. I got to go get everything uploaded to the repos and stuff. So I still got a lot of work, but I'll be doing that off stream. So thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys next time. I'll, I'll ping you guys in discord and stuff when there's a, uh, when there's another stream. So good night guys. <laughs>